Hey, what's going on guys? Goldtimush back at it with another video. A $1,000 gaming PC build perfect for running all the latest titles and upcoming games at 1080p, 60 frames per second, or you can even game at 1440p at decent settings and decent frame rates. Expect to play games like Battlefield, Batman, Arkham Knight, Witcher 3, all the latest titles, Dying Light, all the latest games at 1080p at really good settings and really good frame rates. You might not be able to max every game out at 1440p, but at 1080p you should be just fine. So let's get right into this video. As always, for the CPU, I went with the Intel Core i5-4690K 3.5GHz quad-core processor. For $230, this is a beast of a CPU for gaming. It's a K-series processor, so you can also do overclocking. I decided to go with a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO in this build, but you can get water cooling or whatever you prefer. But something cheap like the Hyper 212 EVO is going to let you go up to 4.0 GHz and then you're going to have a dream of a gaming experience from your CPU. The Intel Core i5-4690K, while it lags behind a little bit in video editing, rendering, and live streaming, in gaming it's an absolute monster. Since most games only utilize 4 cores, the i5's 4 cores are utilized to max potential. Paired with a good GPU, it's great for 1080p gaming and this is a really solid CPU for $230 and if you overclock it, you're just going to get even more performance out of it. For the motherboard, I went with the MSI Z97-G45 Gaming ATX LG 1150 motherboard. It's on the LG 1150 socket, Intel Z97 board so you can overclock on it. 4 RAM slots, up to 3000 DDR3 memory and up to 32 gigabytes of max memory support. It has RAID support, Crossfire support, SLI support and 6 SATA 6 gigabit per second port. And aesthetically, it looks great and goes great with all the other parts in our build. This is a great motherboard for only $125 from MSI. For RAM, I went with G-Skill Ripjaws X-Series 8GB 24GB sticks running at 1600MHz. $60 for this RAM, it's 8GB of RAM, but like I said, the motherboard does have 4 RAM slots, so this is 2 4GB sticks, say in 16, 18, 20 months down the line, you want to go with a 16GB configuration, you just have to buy another kit of the same RAM, and you'll be good to go. But for now, 8GB is more than enough. For storage, for the mechanical hard drive, I went with the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 7200 RPM internal hard drive. About $52 for this hard drive and this is where all your mass media is going to go. Your excess games, movies, pictures, all that kind of stuff you're going to put on the Caviar Blue 1TB. For the SSD I went with the Samsung A50 Evo Series 120GB SSD. This is where you're going to put your OS and your key applications. Say you play Battlefield 4 or Battlefield Hardline a lot, you guys are going to know that the load times in those games are pretty long. Put it on the SSD and it's going to reduce it to seconds. But as you guys probably know, 120GB isn't enough for all your games, all your movies, all that kind of stuff. So we also went with the 1TB for all your excess media and the 120GB SSD for all your you know, key applications, all the stuff that you're going to need access to right away. For the video card, I went with the Asus GeForce GTX 970 4GB video card. For $330, this is the best GPU on the market for 1080p gaming. You're going to be maxing out games like Dying Light, Witcher 2, Witcher 3, Call of Duty, Battlefield, all those games. 1080p, 60fps or near 60fps on all of them. Some of the higher end games like Metro Last Light and uh, the upcoming Witcher 3. Not a lot can max those games out and get 60fps constant, but you're going to get pretty damn close. And if you lower the settings a tad, you will get 60fps constant. The GTX 970 is a great GPU for the money, and this Asus model has a great cooler as well, so if you want to overclock it and get even more performance out of it, that option is open as well, and for $330, you really can't go wrong with the GTX 970. For the power supply, I'm with the EVGA Supernova Neck 750W 80 Plus Bronze Certified Semi-Modular ATX Power Supply. $65 for this power supply. 750 watts is probably more than you need, but if you want to go for an SLI configuration, you can go for that, and it's semi-modular. And for $65, it wasn't a bad deal at all. You can get away with, say, a 600 watts, so if you want to save some money, get a 600 watt. But if you want some extra options open, like an SLI configuration option, then the 750 watt for $65 is a really solid deal, and it's semi-modular, so that helps with cable management as well. But just a great price. I mean, you can save like $15, $20 and get a 600 watt, but this 750 watt was so cheap that I just went with it in this build. Finally for the case, I went with the NZXT S340 Black ATX mid-tower case. This is probably my favorite mid-tower case on the market right now at a very good price of $65. Aesthetically, it looks great. Sleek as hell. It's got the side window everyone loves and the interior wise. It's got a lot of good ventilation and a lot of room for upgrades. Wire management plus our power supply being a semi-modular power supply. Wire management is going to be easy as hell on this case and it's black so it goes with all the other parts in our build as well. It'll give you a nice color scheme if you're into that. And the NZXT S340 is just a solid case all around for $65. It's cheap. It won't break the bank but it's a damn good value. Thanks for watching this video guys. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. Like this video. If you dislike this video, obviously dislike. Leave your requests for future videos i read all the comments so leave your requests in the comment section down below and i will talk to you all later have a great day peace